Now lay this guy down. Now, if you pivot, he's yeah. already on the plane. So you've already pre... Yeah, then you just have to tilt. And it helps people create this feeling up and in the shoulder mm. that allows the elbows to kind of, I would just say, kind of maintain their width. All right, Dennis, so let's talk about when it comes to the elbow distance uh, in the golf swing from address to the top of the swing, coming back down into impact and then follow through. And we see a huge difference really in this element between the amateur and the professional. Correct. And I feel like there's a, a big misunderstanding of exactly the distance between them, how to achieve that at address. We see a lot of players trying to squeeze that mm -hmm. in there. Um, and then secondary, also the general movement that we see with the recreational golfer would be a huge separation at impact yep. and through impact relative to almost a re-squeezing of the elbows that you see with a professional. Right? Yes. So what I want you to do, first of all, is I'm gonna get set up here and I want you to kind of run me through a little bit of what you would generally see with the professional golfer from address to the top of the swing, then coming down through into impact for me. I would say, uh, I mean, we could we could spend hours on this. Yeah, but we'll focus a little bit more on the trail arm than it is the lead arm. Okay. 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 So in terms of the trail arm, I, I think your trail arm setup is really nice, mm -hmm. where it, it's kind of moved into a little bit of what I would just kind of call position three. Okay. So in terms of position three with the trail arm, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm a lefty. Right? Mm -hmm. So if we kind of look at it normal, there would be position one. Mm -hmm. Position two is you can see the elbow starting to work into the midline and then position three mm -hmm. would go a little bit more and then you can kind of see how the radial bone starts to kind of move a little bit more away from the target than the owner. Sure. Yeah. Right? And then we would want to kind of feel down by impact mm -hmm. that guy right there. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's how the elbows would squeeze. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Because again, when, when this elbow in, in the shoulder girdle starts to get a little bit more into internal. Yeah. The radial bone starts to get a little closer, which then pulls the elbow back and away. Mm. And that's where the spacing starts to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Because again, a little bit could be as they're extending, tilting, and turning rates with the arms mm -hmm. get a little bit off. They're not getting that trail shoulder out of the way fast enough to keep that elbow. Yeah. Using the arms and the trail elbow to take it back more than it is the shoulder. Now the shoulder hasn't cleared enough the trail shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. So the ability to stretch that helps that elbow kind of staying to that position three mm. which has a little bit more external with the sensation of being a little bit more external in terms of trying to keep the elbows kind of tight mm. the uh, tour players elbows do open right mm -hmm. but it would be not trying to open them up yeah. but still i would say kind of trying to squeeze them yeah. a little bit more trying to maintain the pressure point underneath the armpits four and five yeah where the, the average golfer is not maintaining that correct right so at setup, if we just throw out a crazy number, because I don't like telling people like the real numbers, right? <laughs> they get too say specific. It's, like, it's too specific. And people go, oh, well, you said eight inches. I'm like, there's just a reference, right? Yeah. So we'll just say like 20 inches, which everybody can see it's not, right? Yeah. So as they start to kind of get to the top, it'll start to kind of get a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when we say a little bit, it's only a small amount. It's not it's like a the small professionals it, it, it's trying a to couple, pull. Yeah, it's a, it's a couple inches, mm -hmm. okay? And then from the transition down, they'll start to squeeze a little bit more. And then as they start to kind of get a little bit closer to impact, it's squeezing back to where it was, which we said was about 20. And then here's the big one is this through impact going into the follow through and like right about here is where the elbows are the tightest. Mm. So they are smaller in terms of the distance at this point mm -hmm. than they were at setup. Mm. Where when you see a lot of, when I see a lot of golfers, again, in video and in gears, yeah. you see the elbows right from the beginning getting to the top, opening up even more. Massively. And then in the way down, opening up, and then they never have a chance to ever squeeze them because the elbow isn't in position three. Yeah. Which then also kind of helps a little bit of the lag mm. with that trail wrist. Yeah, so I would say really kind of putting this together for a lot of players is that the importance of the setup of the position, yeah. right? So we see a lot of amateur golfers, let's say the club's down on the ground here, they just get this backhand, they whack that puppy on. Yeah, so it's way more internal. Way more internal. The, the pocket's facing each other, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes they'll even do it like this, but yeah. this one's facing here. Yeah. So now you have a, a big move to get that trail shoulder into a position that then allows you to squeeze your elbows. Yeah, yeah, and there is a, um, a movement within 
this trail arm here called external rotation, which is essentially this movement here. Yes. Now, what a professional golfer does, and it's often, often referenced as like a, holding a dinner tray at the top, a bit. is essentially that this elbow within reason, using this camera here, you can see it's more in front of my body yes. relative to that. Yeah, and I would just say I like to kind of use it as the midline. Yeah. Like they're working the elbow a little bit more this way, where I would say more amateurs are kind of getting it more. That, oh, way. that way gets a little bit more internal, which starts that opening piece, which then it's almost impossible to to recover from. Correct. And I think if we, we simplify the backswing motion and we talk about if we were playing golf from a horizontal plane, yeah. you would never put that, elbow that way. put that elbow in that position yeah. and pull it no. back behind you. But when the golf ball is down on the ground, a lot of amateur golfers are going either A, their concept of keeping the club face facing the ball for yeah. as long as they can, or they're simply not allowing the pivot of their body yeah. to then facilitate that movement. That yeah, we like see what I like about that is like your, your trail shoulder is beautiful. Yeah. In terms of the stretching piece. Now, if we go back to the table concept, because mm -hmm. I love using the, the kitchen table playing on a horizontal plane. So get back into that horizontal plane. So uh, I, I like getting people to understand. So you're holding the club just in your left hand, mm -hmm. vertical. Mm -hmm. Okay. Get your arm into position one. Mm -hmm. Right. Move it into two. Mm -hmm. Move it into three. Now lay this guy down. Mm. Now, if you pivot, he's yeah. already on the plane. Yeah, correct. So you've already increased, yeah, then you just have to tilt. And it helps people create this feeling up and in the shoulder mm. that allows the elbows to kind of, I would just say, kind of maintain their width versus the other way. Now do that again on the kitchen table. Don't get yourself into position three, a little bit more this way. Mm -hmm. It's so hard because your, your palm is not even onto the plane already. So now you have to go and do some craziness. It feels, yeah, horrible. Yeah. Yeah. It's very difficult. Yeah. So uh, the importance of the setup and getting the trail arm facing with the elbow socket here facing more up towards the sky. Yeah. The elbow works towards the midline. Yeah. And then the right hand for the right hand are turning slightly down so we can put our grip in our functional pattern. I yeah. like to say very much like throwing a dart is yeah. the best way to get that feeling. Yeah. Put that right hand back on the golf club. Then from here, as we set up and then we go into our backswing piece, I think an amazing reference, which you were just detailing there, is just, I think about the back of my right shoulder, really as we bring this golf club back, allowing the wrists to move, Yeah. right? We can see that this structure, if I stand up dead straight and then move back down to our horizontal plane, yeah. this staying more towards the midline shaft is very flat. We're, Easy. We're and then plane. to square up the club, a lot of golfers will want to use the right arm, mm. but then it just stays here. Yeah. And then the radial bone starts to go, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, coming and back that's in. your squaring mechanism. Yeah, and even with that, just as a little sort of side note, when I won't regress, it's almost the feeling of a nail yeah. being banged in with a hammer on yeah. this plane here. Then if we actually just pivot our body, get down into that position, tilt, yeah. well, that's the backswing, right? So really that hit component within reason, there is no big rolling and movement of that arm. No, no. Yeah. And a lot of times what I like to do with players is I'll hold the impact bag here. Yeah, and then we'll practice. Oh, we'll practice on the horizontal plane, mm. getting it into position three, back, and then hitting it, mm. and then we'll start to kind of tilt it. Yeah, and then keep working it more down. So, to me, it gets a little bit harder because when we're just sitting here vertical, yeah, all we're just focusing on, right, is basically this plane. Yeah, we don't have to worry about the extending and tilting. So we're not going through the three planes. So it gets confusing. Yeah, blending all three pieces: the extending, tilting, and churning. Mm. Right, because people don't do that really well. But at least you can teach them arm structure yeah. separate from the pivot. Yeah, that then you can start to teach them the proper extending, tilting, churning rates to maintain their hugs, which then helps control low point. So, so I would say that when players are working on creating a consistent distance between the elbow creases, right? Yep. So, um, when we set up to it, and let's say a player analyzes their swing, and there's this big sort of separation, mm -hmm. and they're moving. A lot of players would then go, okay, well, I just need to chuck a ball between my arms and keep it there and keep it there and keep it there. But we end up seeing that they're doing the same thing, mm -hmm. but they're essentially just forcing it with tension in their arms. But yeah. Yeah. I think that exercise that you just showed us there of, I would like go like you're throwing two darts, mm -hmm. you fold those arms down, look where your elbow creases are facing, mm -hmm. hold that in your front hand, right? From there, lay that shaft down into this position. If you just then pivot and then tilt, mm -hmm. well now we're in a great spot to deliver that golf club. Yep. From there I would say set up, see if you can get back to that same position as and you just were. And then the easy way would be to check, you just lose the tilt. Yeah. 
where's your arms? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. Because then if you sat right there, and then if you got back into your forward tilt, that's about P6. Yeah, it so is. So you can go through all your checkpoints, all your positions, mm. or alignments, whatever you want to call it, mm. right? On the horizontal plane with the club, mm. just focusing on the churning. Yeah. Then you can start adding some tilting, and you can see where pieces are throughout the stroke. Mm. And again, it, it's a, a little bit of what I try to get people here is to understand is like trying to learn the game a little bit more like Tai Chi and karate, yeah. super slow motion mm. stuff than it is tr going full bore at it. You're correct. Right? Because if you came to, a, and I was a karate teacher, yeah. and you're learning, and I'm going to teach you how to block, right? I, I, don't, I don't have a taken but again, karate kid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. You know Mr. Miyagi didn't stop punching him really fast, <laughs> <laughs> right? Because how many times would the, the student let the teacher punch them? Correct. Because yeah. you never stop it right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So you'd always get hit. But in golf, we don't get hurt. But could you imagine if you got hurt? Because mm. again, if I punched you, I'd go get some towels, some smelling salts, wake yeah, yeah. you up. How many times would you let me do that? Be like, oh, time out, man, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. But in golf, I, oh man, I got hit with the ball, so hurry up and hurry up and hurry up. There's not enough time being super specific with the motion. Yeah. It's the same thing with dance. Yeah. Dance is the similar thing. I mean, at the beginning with the new student, they're not super particu particular with the motions mm. and picky with it until you start getting better and better. Then they nitpick the crap out of it. But mm. they do things in front of mirrors constantly and then trying to refine the motions perfectly before they even really start to kind of blend it with dance steps. Yeah, and I think with golf, just from a performance standpoint, is we have the luxury of being able to, uh, let's say, satire's our uh, instant gratification oh. because we have such a big bucket of balls there and we can react to the previous one. But if there is a defined consequence, let's say learning to drive a manual car, you're going to stall it if you don't get the right sequence. Yeah. And when it comes to golf, just learning slow, intentional, mm -hmm. being aware of these movement patterns then builds a feel that you're able to then recreate over a period of time at yeah. a faster speed. Yeah, even though it might feel weird, mm. it's got to look right. Yeah. And I think, like I made a post a, a, a while ago on Tiger and the learning process, which is something that I always try to hammer into my people here, is that when you're trying to learn something new, it's going to feel weird. And if you don't like that weird feeling, it'll never change. So it has to feel Correct. weird. And one of the first things that I think a lot of golfers struggle when they're on the range is not using cameras enough. Because mm. you got to first change the picture. Yeah. That, that feel is going to be weird. Mm. And it doesn't have to match the picture, but I've got to, I've got to create a picture. Yeah. And then I've got to create a feel that matches the picture. And then as I'm doing that, I might not get the result that I'm looking for. Mm. But as you keep hammering away and getting that picture better from day to day to day, it'll start to get there. Then that weird feeling becomes normal. And as that weird feeling starts to become normal, now you can start to pay a little bit more attention to the face, the path, and the strike quality to start to get the ball flying the way we want it to go. But that's the process mm. in facilitating change. Mm. I've got to change the picture. Yeah. yeah. And if I don't change the picture, I haven't changed anything. <laughs> yeah. And then we know, we know, I've been playing golf for a long time, yeah. what we feel and then what these cameras show yeah. is entirely different. Very different. And that's like I said, like I like this learning environment because it helps with the baselines. It's yeah. very uh, rich with feedback. So we're making sure that that trail arm. Mm. So if you were here a student, we'd have plenty of tools to make sure that that guy is good while you're practicing here. And then I encourage people to either get practice memberships here yeah. or you got to go buy certain tools that help us create that feel. Get feedback. If you're going to go practice on your own, when you come back, I want to see the change to the picture. Yeah. Give me change to my picture. Yeah. And then get better at it. Yep. Make it feel more natural. Because mm -hmm. I can promise you what I do, it may look natural, but it's taken a long time to make it look natural. I wasn't born this way. <laughs> right? With my golfing. Neither were you, right? We would only dream. We would only dream. <laughs> it would be nice. <laughs> All right, so uh, from the address position, something that the, the players could take away here is we need yes. a little bit more of this external rotation yes, of that moving right the arm. Elbow to the midline. Yeah, perfect. perfect. Second piece would be in the back swing, feeling like more of the, the back of the right shoulder for the right hander is moving the golf club back to complete the finish Move. rather than pulling the arms. Yes. And then the last piece I just want to briefly touch on is just the understanding that with a professional golfer, as they're coming through into impact, there is post impact, the elbows would be at their tightest point and almost somewhat of a squeezing. Now that doesn't mean that we're really trying to wrench them together as much as yes. possible, but an awareness once again that if you were taking the horizontal plane reference, if you were just hitting a baseball or something similar, you feel it automatically, yeah. right? It mm -hmm. is the weight of the golf club moving into a position where the connection points you can feel are very apparent underneath the uh, armpits there and 
the lengthening of the shaft through impact there. Yeah. So when we get down into position and we've got our elbow more towards the midline, mm -hmm. we feel the back of the trail shoulder moving back and then post impact, just kind of working on feeling that these arms, the old uh, hit it hard, stop quick drill yeah. into an impact bag through making sure that we've got some sort of stability there that would help a lot. And I would say like people would do sight set. Yeah. Maybe with two clubs. So like I like to do cl two clubs. So one day might be pitching wedge eight. Mm -hmm. The next day maybe nine and seven. And mm -hmm. then you might hit 20 balls like that with each club. Yeah. And that I would say would be a staple baseline practice component yeah. for players. Yeah. It's awesome. hammering away at that. Okay. And so I'm going to go through this feel elbow crease is facing more out, palm yep. slightly down from here, back of the trail shoulder, mapping it out, feeling really good, moving through, good connection points there. Yes. Let's hit a shot. Awesome. Tell you what, that felt great. Nice work. Cheers. Awesome. Bye. <laughs>